In this setup video, we're going to talk about audio interface options on Mac, and then I'm going to take you through the hardware setup inside of MainStage. Now, what do I mean when I say hardware setup? Well, to get the full benefit of MainStage, there are two pieces of external hardware that are almost always a requirement. The first and most obvious is an external MIDI controller, and that can be something like a keyboard or a dedicated MIDI controller like a launch pad or MIDI pedal board. The second piece of hardware you'll want to invest in, especially if you're planning on using main stage outside of the studio, is an audio interface. Now, what's the benefit to an audio interface? Well, simply put, it's an external sound card for your computer. Your built-in sound card on your Mac isn't meant to handle low latency audio, and an audio interface is. You'll get higher end analog to digital and digital to analog converters in a more expensive audio interface, but the one major selling factor for me for an audio interface for playing live is the inputs and outputs. Depending on what you'll buy, you'll get at least two balanced or unbalanced quarter inch or XLR outputs, and if you get more, you can use those outputs to send additional signals like click track. So, to summarize that, an audio interface helps with intensive audio tasks and gives you inputs and outputs that are more geared towards studio and stage use. Now that we've talked about audio interfaces, let's talk about three standard connections for interfaces. If you're buying an interface, you're most likely to see USB, FireWire, and more recently, Thunderbolt. Traditionally, FireWire is faster than USB, which translates to lower latency. However, it's becoming increasingly more difficult to buy a computer with a FireWire port. In fact, there isn't even a single Mac in Apple's current lineup that has a FireWire port. But you're not completely out of luck if you want to buy a FireWire interface, because Apple sells a Thunderbolt to FireWire adapter that actually works quite well. Now, I'm not here to recommend specific products for your audio interface, but let me at least point you in the right direction. If you want an easy compare and contrast between USB and FireWire, you should check out Focusrite. Their Scarlet line of products is their USB line, and their Sapphire branded products are FireWire. I also recommend taking a look at their USB interface under their sister company Novation, and that's called the Audio Hub 2x4. That's a pretty rugged interface that also acts as a power USB hub for your extra peripherals. Lastly, let's talk briefly about Thunderbolt. Now, Thunderbolt and Thunderbolt 2 is absolutely the fastest connection you can currently get in the audio interface realm. I can't imagine a keyboard player needing to run their main stage rig at Thunderbolt speeds, but we do get one small benefit, if not the low latency, and that's that you can free up your USB ports on your computer by using Thunderbolt. So enough about the minutia of audio interfaces. Let's move on to audio MIDI setup for main stage. With main stage opened, click on the main stage 3 menu and from the drop down select preferences. In the preferences window, make sure you have audio selected. Inside of the audio selection, you can see that we have options for audio output and audio input. Typically, you'd like these to match whatever interface you're using. In this panel, you're essentially telling MainStage what to get your inputs from and where it's sending the outputs to. For the moment, I'm not using an audio interface, so I'm just going to select the built-in output for my output and keep my built-in microphone as my input. Now for me, the input isn't that necessary, so I could even change that to no input if I wanted. If you wanted to record into MainStage at a high sample rate, you can change that in this panel. I'm going to keep mine at 44.1 for now. If we click this advanced settings button, we get even more options available, and one of those is very critical, and that's buffer size. Now buffer size is an interesting beast to tame. Ideally you want your buffer size as low as it can go. Lowering the buffer size means lower latency, and that shortens the delay between pressing a key and hearing the sound. However, a lower buffer size can be taxing on your computer, especially if you're trying to play a really big patch with really large samples. If your computer can't handle it, you'll get a very audible crackling sound. Increasing the buffer size does the opposite. We're giving the computer more time to catch up, so it's less CPU intensive, but we're also going to experience higher latency, so you may get a very noticeable delay between striking a key and hearing the sound. You can check this resulting latency menu to get a better idea of what kind of latency to expect in milliseconds. I'm also going to leave this I.O. safety buffer checked. If you keep this checked, MainStage will increase the output buffer when it senses a possible CPU spike. Alright, now that we've done that, let's make sure we're getting MIDI input to our computer. I have my MIDI controller plugged in via USB, and I'm going to click on this setup button here. Confusingly enough, this will actually pull up the Max Audio MIDI Setup window, which opens the audio setup by default. To get the MIDI setup, click the Window menu, then Show MIDI Studio. Next, I'm going to click Test Setup and start playing some keys on my keyboard. Now you can see, as I do that, you can see the arrow is lighting up, indicating that we're receiving MIDI output from the keyboard. So there's the basics of the audio MIDI setup inside of MainStage. 
We'll get a little bit deeper with the audio setup later on in the series when we talk about click tracks. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.